All right, MEGN 300, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about thermocouples and how we can use those uh, to take temperature measurements. And we'll talk about how you set this up in the DAC and in LabVIEW, also so that you can use a thermocouple to measure the temperature of your oven uh, during your final design challenge assignment. All right, so first of all, we should talk about what is a thermocouple. It is a type of temperature sensor, and it produces a voltage signal in response to temperature. Okay, it does this by using something called the Seebeck effect, um, which will generate a voltage when you expose these wires to different temperatures. So how this works is inside of a thermocouple are two wires, which are made of different alloys. And those wires are typically taken together and they're, they're actually welded at the, the tip of the thermocouple where the temperature measurement actually happens. And uh, what we get is called the Seebeck effect. So when we expose those wires to a temperature, we have a temperature difference across this system of the wires where we've got the two alloys welded together, we get a voltage potential that's generated by those two different alloys being in close contact with one another. All right. uh, this is the same effect that uh, Mars, the Mars rover uses, Curiosity, or has the um, radioisotope thermal generator. It's got decaying radio, radioactive isotope in there that generates heat, and then it has a whole bunch of these uh, different alloy junctions inside of there to generate a voltage, so that's how it actually powers the, the rover also. Same idea, um, but we use it here on Earth a lot to uh, measure temperatures instead of generating power. Um, so that, that's the basic idea of what a thermocouple does. The one thing to keep in mind here also that's going to show up in LabVIEW is you'll notice we have the cold junction labeled here because we do have our wires that are joining to a different alloy again. So the thermocouple has its own special alloys that are inside of it and then typically we're connecting to some copper wires inside of our instrumentation system. And uh, that junction where we go from the thermocouple alloys to the copper wires is another dissimilar metal junction where we're gonna get a voltage potential. So it's important for us to know uh, the temperature of this cold junction, which we will see, and we'll, there's a factor that we call the cold junction correction that we're gonna be setting in LabVIEW when we set this up. All right, uh, thermocouples come in different flavors or different types, they're all given a special letter, um, and they'll be standard across manufacturers when uh, th these different types are. Um, and they all have a different characteristic response to temperature. So their output voltage is going to be a function of temperature, and it's going to be a little bit different for each type of thermocouple. So each of these types is just a different combination of alloys that's inside of the thermocouple, um, and that's what makes their voltage characteristics different. Probably the most common one that you'll run into and the one that we have in the lab today is called type K. Um, it's fairly inexpensive and it has a really wide temperature range that it can cover. Uh, so you see it a lot in a lot of just general purpose temperature measurement applications, right? Um, it'll cover from negative 200 to uh, 1250 C. So that's quite a, a broad range of temperatures uh, that you can measure with this one device. All right, so how do we connect this thing to the DAC? Um, be, having this BNC accessory on attached to your DAC it makes your life quite easy when we want to measure a thermocouple because it actually has a thermocouple jack built directly into it. All right, so if you take a look at the analog input section of your DAC um, up in the top left hand corner of the, the whole BNC accessory, you should see a white plastic plug. That is the thermocouple jack and it's got a couple of little slots in there where you can plug the thermocouple in. Um, it does only go in one way, so if you look carefully at the thermocouple, one of the plugs is wider than the other, so just make sure you line up uh, the, the plugs with their correct holes so that it'll go in. If you feel like you're having to force it, it's probably backwards. Um, and the other thing is uh, we'll need to swap the uh, switch on the BNC accessory to make sure that we're telling it that we want to measure the thermocouple and not the voltage coming into the BNC jack anymore. So for most of the class, we've been telling you, make sure that switch is set to BNC, otherwise you're not gonna get anything uh, being read by the DAC. And today we're gonna flip that switch and actually use it to, to measure a thermocouple, right? So just make sure that switch is set to thermocouple. All right, so that's really all there is to uh, the, the physical connections with the DAC. It's fairly straightforward. Let's jump over to LabVIEW and take a look at how we set up the DAC to read a thermocouple. 
All right, so here we are in our LabVIEW block diagram. Let's take a look at how to set up the DAC um, in LabVIEW so that we know that we're collecting thermocouple data and we can get our temperature. All right, so what we're going to use here is, is going to be slightly different than what we've done uh, previously in the class. So we gave you guys uh, some VIs that would handle the analog acquisition for you that kind of stripped out a lot of the extra options uh, that LabVIEW has that we didn't really need at the time. So today what I'm going to show you is the DAC Assistant VI, which uh, is an easy to use VI that can set up the DAC and configure it to collect data, um, but it also has a lot more options in it. So there's uh, many different things that we can do inside of the DAC Assistant. So let's take a look at how we get that VI and how we set it up. So go ahead and right click and you should be able to scroll down to express then input and you'll find the DAC Assistant here. Right, so the DAC assistant is an Express VI, which means that it pops up with one of these menus where you configure it in here. So when you drop it down, it's going to go through this initializing step. We should open up here shortly. There we go. All right, and it's going to ask us what we want to do. So we could set this up to generate an output through our analog outputs or the digital outputs on the DAC. Um, that's not what we're doing today. We're here to acquire a signal. So you drop that menu down to acquire a signal. We are acquiring an analog input. So remember the thermocouple is producing a voltage signal. So what we're ultimately doing is we're reading that voltage in to the DAC and then we're gonna convert that into a temperature using math. All right, so our analog input, we can just read the voltage directly, uh, but the DAC assistant actually has an option to read a temperature, which is kind of handy here. So we're gonna tell it that we're using a thermocouple and LabVIEW is gonna have all the equations that we need to convert from voltage of the thermocouple to temperature built in for, it, for us so we don't have to worry about that inside of our VI. We're just gonna get a temperature reading straight from the DAC, okay? So we'll select that we're taking a thermocouple. On your guys' uh, DAC BNC accessories, the thermocouple jack is connected to AI1, all right? So it's not AI0, it's, it's actually on channel one. So make sure you select that one to read the thermocouple. We hit finish and this menu is gonna pop up here. All right, and here, here's a few things that we've got to set here. So first of all, we can set our maximum and minimum range and the units that we want to get out of the DAC. Um, so in our case, we're actually working in Fahrenheit, so we can tell it that we want Fahrenheit, and uh, we need to be able to go up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm just going to go ahead and increase the max range up to 400, okay? Now, down here is actually some information that helps LabVIEW to uh, know how to configure the voltage readings for the thermocouple. So we need to tell it what type of thermocouple we have. So again, this is the alloy combination that you find inside of the thermocouple, which determines its voltage response. So we need to tell it that we have a type K thermocouple is what we have in the lab. And then here is the CJC source. So that's the cold junction correction source. So there's different ways that you can do your cold junction correction. Um, when you're working in an instrumentation concept or situation. So we could use a constant value. That's the simplest way where we just tell LabVIEW what the cold junction temperature is and hold that constant. Um, some DAC cards will have a built-in temperature sensor that you could use also so that you're consistently measuring that. Or you could set up a second channel where you're reading in a temperature with a different type of sense. Uh, sensor like a thermistor or something like that and correct it that way. Today we're going to use the constant value and this CJC value should be in the same units that uh, the the output is so in our case that'd be Fahrenheit and we just want to tell LabVIEW what room temperature is right so the cold junction should just be whatever the lab temperature is because that's where the cold junction is taking place um, so in our case, I checked the thermostat this morning. You can find the readout for that on the wall of the lab near the, uh, the doors to the lab. There's a series of thermostat settings and you can go and find that value. This morning it was 72, right? And uh, we can adjust this value later on if we find that we're not getting the correct uh, values there, right? So, uh, you just go ahead and we can accept the changes here. There's an OK button down here that's popped off the screen, so we'll have to figure out how to uh, click that one. 
All right, and we're back. I just had to go just change my display settings so that I was actually able to click that OK button. Uh, but once you do that, it's going to close out of that menu, and it goes through a little process where it says building VI. That takes a few seconds. Um, that's normal. It just has to set up all the code in the DAC Assistant so that it's uh, correctly reading temperature for you. All right, so once you're done with that, you're going to have a block that looks like this. Um, so we set to one sample on demand, which just means that every time our loop iterates, if we put this inside of a loop, it's, it's going to call this VI and give us one temperature data point. All right, so we want to continuously read our temperatures. So let's go ahead and add a while loop. Like so, and we will create our stop button here. And our data coming out of here, uh, the DAC assistant gives you the dynamic data type, which we don't want. Um, it will constantly change our data type behind the scenes for us and cause a lot of confusing errors later down the line. So best practice is to just convert that right off the bat here. We're going to go to Express, Signal Manipulation from DDT. Drop that block down. And our temperature is just a single number, right? So a single scalar is what we're after here. We'll just get one number coming out of here that we can then uh, send to a chart or uh, do whatever else we need to in our oven control system so that we can control our oven. So that is how you set up the DAC and uh, the lab view side of things to read a thermocouple, right? So as always, swing by the lab if you've got questions, and we'll be happy to help you out.